All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP laptop model 17-BY2053CL. So this actually has a broken hinge mount. Um, and we're going to be replacing this bottom cover as well as the keyboard palm rest assembly. All right, so first thing we're going to be doing is removing the rubber feet here because there are screws hidden underneath. I just used my fingernails to get underneath and peel it up. Um, as you can see, the adhesive layer is actually not sticking on well, so I'm going to get a um, small flathead screwdriver here to try and peel up the adhesive layer. Okay, so we'll get under there and try and peel that up. Yo, this is so gross. It's all gooey. Okay, so we're going to grab the, you want to peel the adhesive layer, not the rubber, because you don't want to stretch out the rubber piece. Okay, and then you can stick that back on, but there we go. You can see this screw's broken off already. So we'll set that aside. All right, we'll remove the rubber foot from this side as well. Make sure again that the adhesive layer is coming up and you're not just peeling out the rubber piece. Okay, we'll set that one aside as well. Keep them in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. Right, same thing with the screws. What I do for the screws is after I remove them, I put them flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Okay, so we got four here. All right, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so again, we got one more there. Then we got two on this side. All right. Then we got, oops, it's stuck to my finger. Then we got two here. And then we got one more up here, all right? If I didn't mention already, these are JAS-1 screws, okay? Make sure you're using a JAS-1 screwdriver. Okay. Ah, that goopy stuff is stuck to my fingers, making it hard to remove these screws. Okay, and then the last one here. All right, we're gonna be replacing this bottom cover as well as the palm rest, so we're pretty much gonna be completely disassembling this thing. All right, if you're wondering, I believe just this one screw, you can remove this, so let's see. Can I pull this out? I'm just running my fingernail up and down this and pulling, and it is coming out. Is it going to come out all the way, or is it caught on something else? Maybe. Oh, it is. Okay. I can actually see the thing sliding forward. So it definitely is that, but it's stuck. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bent out paper clip here. We're going to go, there's a little hole that you can put that in there to eject it. Once you eject it, pull it all the way. And then now that we got it pulled all the way, I'm going to grab over here and that makes it easier. We'll click that back in and now we can get the CD drive, optical disc drive out. This is a nine millimeter or 9.5 millimeter, I think, uh, optical disc drive. You can actually replace this with a um, hard drive caddy, hard drive adapter. So if you wanted to add another hard drive, you can do that. Okay, there are two screws hidden under here. It looks like the plastic is broken on this side as well. Um, let's go ahead and remove those two screws. So there's one there and one more here. Okay, so we got those two screws out. Next thing we'll do, we gotta pop this up. Okay, I think on this one, it's probably easiest from this the front side. We're gonna slowly, carefully open this up. Be careful because the hinges are broken. I'm gonna get my fingernail in that gap. And then what we're gonna do is when we go in that gap, we're gonna push on the back. Okay, just like this. And you can see we can pop the clips out. And we'll just work our way around the case, just like that. Okay, got the front. We're going to turn it this way, and we're going to work on the sides. This one, it helps to kind of push the casing inwards as you kind of pull it up because of the way the clips are in here. Um, this is already, like, cracked and separated from here. So, yeah, all right. We got to get those broken plastic bits out. Okay. So many broken pieces here. Okay, we're gonna go over here and work on this side. Same thing. You can use plastic pry tools if that works for you, but I feel like this works better for me. Okay, oh, this side's stuck pretty strong. 
gonna work out over here, go over here, there we go. Okay, so now that we got the sides and the front out, we should be able to kind of lift this and wiggle it, and there we go. Okay, so this is the broken one that we're replacing. This is broken. You can see this screw mount is also broken. Okay, and we got a replacement, so let me show you what that looks like. Okay. So here's the replacement one. Um, it actually doesn't have the model information there, but uh, this is what it looks like inside. Okay, you can see it has all the screw mounts and everything. All right, looks pretty much the same. And then you got the four screw mounts that aren't broken here. Okay, actually, this screw mount's not really broken much. Um, but it did get all scraped up. It's just this post is shorter. Um, but yeah, anyways, we're gonna replace it just to be safe. Though, this one, we might have been able to get away with reusing it uh, because the screws actually all go into here. Give me a second, let me see if the return policy on this is decent. Maybe I'll just try and reuse this. It will have one less screw there, but that shouldn't be too bad of a problem. I think this part wasn't too expensive, so I might end up just using it. All right, give me a second. All right, so I'm back. Um, this part was like $33, $34. Um, and because this one doesn't really seem too bad, other than it missing this uh, screw piece of plastic for the screw here, um, I think I'm actually going to just reuse this because this part's not too important, actually. Um, actually... Maybe it is. Um, it does help a little bit with the stress here. So I'll just keep using this um, just to be safe. I don't wanna put it, put the other one and then it'll be a little bit weaker. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and continue getting this apart. It looks pretty dusty actually. So I'm gonna clean it up a bit and then we'll be back. We're gonna take the motherboard out, battery, screen, everything, all the wireless antennas. We'll take all of that out transferred over to a new one and yeah all right so i'll see you guys in a bit sorry again <laughs> all right sorry about that i'm back let's go ahead now and start taking this thing completely apart all right so still with the js1 screwdriver let's go ahead and remove the battery we got one screw here okay again hopefully you're keeping all the screws in order because there are a lot of them and they are different size shape and lengths and if you mix them up again you can damage your computer Okay, so if you look at the battery, one here, one up here, one here, and then one more down here. Okay, after you remove those four screws, we're going to go here and just pull straight up, just like that. The battery comes out. Battery model is HT03XL, so if you need a replacement, that's what you would search. If you need help, let me know and I can post a link. Okay, so we got the battery out. Usually what I would do after removing the battery um, to be safe, especially since we're going to have to remove the screen cable, we're going to carefully open up the screen, but we want to be careful because actually both sides, the hinges are broken. Okay. And we're going to carefully, I'm going to hold the hinges to try and open this up. Jeez. Okay. And then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. Again, this makes it a lot safer to work on, um, especially if you're going to be messing with the screen cable. All right. It's not that important if you're just changing the RAM or the hard drive or SSD. Um, but if you are going to mess with the screen cable, uh, you might want to do that. Okay. I'm going to actually leave these hinges up slightly. Um, if you are doing this to remove the screen or something, you do want to open the screen slightly, then undo the screws, and then close the lid so you have it have this little gap here. Okay, since it's already popping out on its own, then I don't need to do that. I can actually just, after I opened it, you can see I can lift these hinges up. Um, oh, this wireless antenna looks a little bit busted. Hopefully it's going to still work okay. All right, then we're going to pull this up as well. You can see the broken screw mounts here, okay? uh should i zoom in a bit let's let's zoom in a bit we're gonna start removing all the components um there's two sticks of ram here as you can see you can pull these two tabs to the side the ram pops up 
And you got this 8 gigs PC4 2666V. You can use any PC4 2666V RAM. So if you want, uh, you can go for two 16 gig sticks and have 32 gigs total. I don't know if they have 32 gig sticks. If they do, um, they should work. Try it and then you can get 64 gigs. There's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD slot here, all right, with the screw. So if you want to upgrade to an M.2, you can. All right, make sure. I think it's PCIe NVMe. All right, what else? Um, we're going to just start disconnecting stuff. Since we're going to be disconnecting everything, I'll go over components as we go, okay? So we got the fan here, obviously. Let's go ahead and take the screws out. Again, keep all the screws in order. There are a lot of screws, so hopefully you're able to keep track of all of them. All right, those two screws, I think we can lift this, but we do need to remove this wireless antenna first. So for the antenna, I go from the tail here, and then I just pull straight up, just like that. This wireless card only has one antenna for some reason, but anyways, we'll just untuck all this wire from under the fan, over, under, over, under, there we go. Then we can lift the fan out. You want to be careful with this. The fan is connected here. Um, I'm going to just use my fingernails at the wings of the black connector. And I'm going to just wiggle it. Okay, there's not much room here to work on it. But just keep wiggling it like this. And it should eventually pop itself out. Oops. Man, this connector is so small. Like the wings don't reach far. But I might have to use some pliers or something. Let's see keep wiggling okay it's coming there we go and here you can see if you're replacing this make sure the exposed metal pins are face up don't put it upside down where it's like that okay so just like that okay I don't know why they put it so where the connectors here and then they flip the fan this way it's kind of weird um, but that's how they did it okay again make sure that you put it back in the right way we'll set the fan aside here oh rubber thing got stuck to my finger okay there we go we'll undo the wireless antenna here just untuck it from the speaker as well okay just like that all right then we'll get this up is there a screw holding it, it seems stuck for some reason doesn't seem like there's a screw there, but for some reason it's stuck down really strong. Kind of weird. Okay, I'm just keeping constant pressure with my thumb here. Feels like there's adhesive. There we go. Okay, and there was some double stick tape there. Okay, and then we got these little plastic things to that are guiding it. There's still some dust that's caught in there. We'll get that out. Okay. What's next? We're gonna leave, oh actually we do need to take the wireless card out, so we'll take the wireless card out as well. Um, there's some cables hidden underneath, so take that out. Pops up at an angle, you can kind of grab this and wiggle and pull it out. All right, this looks like a keyboard backlight cable here. Okay, so we'll flip this latch up and then we can pull this out. All right, we got this little cable here which not 100% sure where that's going, but we'll find out when we get the motherboard out. Let's actually take the, um, oh, is that the optical drive? That's the optical drive connector. So we need to transfer that over, so we'll take this out. Okay, there's two screws holding that. Okay, after we get those two, we can lift this and pull that out. Yep, that's optical disk drive connector. Okay. Next, we got the hard drive connector here. Flip that latch up and then pull this back. You want to be careful with these. Some people break them. All right, so you want to kind of go slow and be gentle with those. You have the hard drive here. Um, how is it being held here? I think we just grab this and carefully pull it up. There's two, like the rubber nubs that stick out. You can see we can pull that up. Oh, there's some adhesive here, so be careful with that. We're going to have to carefully peel that off. Make sure you don't tear up or crease this cable much. You want to try and hold this down as you peel that up. There we go. Okay, we've got that, and we can pull this up. These little brackets can come off. Um, there's some adhesive holding it a little bit. But uh, this bracket comes off. Oh, it has a plastic thing, and it, yeah. So you can actually connect this to, a, you can get a 2.5-inch SATA SSD if you want, instead of using these spinning drives. 
Um, again, you can also put a M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD, which is more recommended because those are faster. If you want to remove this connector, I just get my, oops, I get my thumbnail in between the connector and there, and then I kind of just pry it. It's like this. Okay, you can see it's coming out. I'm kind of going the other side as well. There's not much area I can use to leverage here, but basically pry that up, and there we go. And we're just going to leave that there. It's a standard SATA connector, all right? Again, any two and a half inch SATA drive should work. Um, you can, I highly recommend changing it to an SSD um, because spinning drives now they suck, <laughs> all right? Okay, there we go. Next, we got this connector here, which is going underneath the motherboard somewhere. Let's go ahead and get the keyboard connector out first. We're gonna peel this back. Okay, geez, this keyboard connector's all like folded up all over the place, interesting. Okay, so we got that. We'll flip this latch up. Sorry, and then we can go ahead and pull this back. I don't know why they got all this like folded up like that, but uh, that's how they did it. Kind of interesting. All right, then we got the two cables here. You got the touchpad trackpad cable here. We are gonna have to transfer this cable to the new um, board. So we'll flip this latch up and then this can pull out. We'll flip this latch up. And then this can also pull out, but there's adhesive. So we got to, again, keep it flat. So I'm going to pull it this way as I kind of peel it up just like this and hold it down. You want to be very careful at these corners that you don't just rip it out. So I'm holding this down as I, again, continue pulling as I pull up. Okay, there we go. All right, and we got that cable out. So we'll set that aside. Um, I can actually attach this to the new one. So here's what the new one looks like. Okay. I'm gonna flip this latch up and I'm gonna actually put this cable in there first. Sorry if I'm going out of view, okay. All right, there we go. Then flip that latch down. And then if you want, I guess you can go ahead and stick this all back down. All right, I'm gonna set this aside again. Okay, then we got this cable here. This is for the touchpad trackpad buttons, which we are gonna to have to transfer over. Flip that up and then pull that back. Let me actually zoom out a little bit because I have no more room to move the computer up. All right, got this. We're gonna take out the two screws and we're gonna transfer this over as well. Okay, two screws there, and then lift up from this side. It has these plastic hooks holding it in place, so we'll lift from this side. Okay, you can lift slightly, very little. Um, you can't lift too high, and then we slide this back, and there we go. Okay, so now we get the replacement one. We have to do the same thing in reverse. We'll slide this in here. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. We have this keyboard cable in the way. Okay, so this you gotta slide back into these little notches there, and then you drop this down. You can actually see the raised plastic um, that holds it into the right position. Then we'll get this screw and put that back in. Okay, and a screw. It's hard to do this while holding it up like that, but I don't wanna keep having to move things around. Okay, that screw, and get that in. I'm gonna rest it against my forearm, and we'll tighten that down. Perfect, and tighten this down. All right, this screw, oops, can't even see what I'm doing. So this M.2 PCIe NVMe screw didn't come with the new uh, keyboard assembly, so we're gonna transfer that over. Okay, transfer that over there, just like this. All right, let's go ahead and continue removing components. All right, so let's see, what do we got? So this piece is actually held down with adhesive. Um, we're gonna remove this board here. Okay. 
There's two screws. This is a daughter board. So we're going to flip this latch up and then we're going to pull this cable back and we're going to set this aside for now. Okay. We can actually transfer it and actually transfer it over right now if we want. So you can go ahead and drop this into here on the replacement one. Okay. Yeah, let's see here. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna have to hold it this way so that I can put some pressure underneath when I screw it down. This is for the USB slot as well as the SD card slot, it seems. Okay. We'll tighten that down and tighten this down. Okay, I'll set that aside. All right, we've got to peel this up. Again, pull it sideways as you peel it up and then hold your finger here so that you don't accidentally just suddenly like rip it out. You don't want to accidentally tear it out. There we go, okay. As you can see, it's loose now. Okay, what's next? We got the motherboard LCD LVDS connectors right here that we need to disconnect. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, LCD LVDS connector. Flip that latch up. Again, before you mess with this, you do want to remove the battery and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds. Excuse me. All right, we're going to disconnect this cable here. I just go at the wings with my fingernails and wiggle it and just keep wiggling. And there we go. Okay, so get that out. This is the speaker connector, if I didn't already mention it. All right, LCD LVDS connector. After flipping that latch, you can go ahead and grab this, untuck it from there. You gotta pull it up slightly and back. And there we go. Okay, technically now we can actually remove the entire screen assembly. So let me actually zoom out here for you guys. So we didn't have to undo the screws because it was broken. But if you if yours isn't broken, you have to remove the screws there and these two screws, okay? All right, now that we got that broken and we pulled the hinges back, we should be able to just slide this out of the way. There we go. Okay, so we got that out. I'm gonna set the keyboard aside for now. We're gonna remove the two screws. <clears throat> Where'd that plastic piece go? Give me a second, some plastic piece fell out. All right, back. Sorry about that. All right, let's go ahead and get these screws out of the screen here. Okay, so we're just going to grab these with these needle nose pliers and undo the screws. Okay, we'll toss these pieces because we don't need them. So I'll get all four of these screws out. This screen's a little dusty. Okay, got those out. We're gonna get these two out as well. <clears throat> Usually these break because of a bad design, if you're wondering. <clears throat> okay, and a lot of times it's like these screws start coming loose and then that causes some wobble. Allows for some play. And then when it's opened and closed, it just like snaps. Anyways, there we go, got those out. Let me brush this off a little bit. Dump this into the trash next to me. Okay, it's not completely clean, but it's better. All right, so there's the screen. We'll set that aside. <clears throat> Right. <clears throat> All right, let's see what else we got to remove here. 
<clears throat> lots of components to remove on this. Give me a second, I'm getting messages. Okay, so we gotta remove, <coughs> excuse me, continue removing screws and everything here. All right, there's a screw here holding it down. Again, keep track of all these screws. There's a lot of them. Um, do we have to remove this one? It looks like we do. So let's go ahead and get this screw out as well. And keep track of this little piece here. Okay, it has this little clippy on it for the center. There's actually little holes that help guide where that plastic thing goes. Okay, definitely can lift it more now. Got another silver screw over here. <clears throat> okay. What else? We got another screw over here. <clears throat> we got another screw over here. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. We got the DC jack charge port connector here. So we should be able to lift this out. Oh, there's another hidden screw right here up in this corner. Make sure you get that one as well. Jeez, this thing has a lot of screws on this one side. Okay, you can see we can lift this whole board up now. Okay, so we actually got all the screws out. If we can lift this up, you can see we can lift this out. I'm not going to disconnect the DC jack because I don't need to. It's already um, out enough. So we're going to lift the motherboard out. Okay, make sure this didn't, um, oops, make sure this cable didn't stick itself back down. So peel that up and again we're gonna lift the motherboard up and try and grab only on the board itself okay so we're gonna try and grab just the board area on the edges and it feels like it's still stuck is there another screw or is it oh this uh, wire for the speaker was holding it down there we go okay oh this cable is sticking itself back down so make sure to be careful with that We'll flip it over and here you can see there's not really anything on the back side. Um, we will clean up the dust a little though, but uh, other than that, it looks decent. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to set this aside now. <clears throat> okay, we got the speaker here. Oh, there's still the adhesive there, so... It's kind of sticking. There's probably adhesive here as well. So we're gonna again try and just get underneath here. You can use plastic pry tool. Oops, use plastic pry tools or whatever. I just again use my fingernail and I'm gonna carefully just slowly pull up on this. And the adhesive should release. Okay. Here we go. And there's the speaker. So we'll set that aside. Oops, you can see the adhesive on that one as well. Okay. So, I think we removed everything we need to. Let's take a look. So this one, you can see there's this clear plastic film on it. This one has this black plastic film on it. Not really an issue. Let's put that down there. This one, they it's like they melted new plastic in place. Hopefully it'll be okay. You can see how they have the uh, wire here. They folded it there. I don't know how they decided where to fold it. But uh, let me see, because I have to figure this out. So, to have this line up, this is folded here. And then, I guess it goes out to where this raised mount is. So, we will somewhat fold it similar. Okay, so get that, and then fold it over like this. Okay, somewhat like that, kind of fold it, don't crease it too hard, and then eventually it will curve back over like this. We can do that when we get the motherboard in, but for now we're just going to have it like that. <clears throat> the keyboard cable, I don't know what's up with this. Um, this one has all this stuff here. Huh. Okay, let's peel this off. What is this? Am I supposed to... Oh, okay. I think that's supposed to act like this piece here. And 
Yeah, that's like a really weird fold. I don't know. Okay, so they folded this like... Hmm. How do I decide where to fold that? So it's folded like here. Like this. But it's not even creased all the way down. It's just a little bit. Okay, so it's kind of like this. And it's kind of somewhat lining up with the thing here and somewhat not. So it's like this. Okay, and then this folds back somewhat like here. This is so weird. <laughs> What is going on? Why'd they fold it like that? Okay, so it's like that. <clears throat> and then it folds back where this meets. Yeah, that's the weirdest like keyboard fold cable, but okay, that's how they had it. And then they stuck this tape stuff down on top. I'm worried though, if I do this and then it doesn't work, Okay, they have this tape here, so let's actually peel this off. This was just to hold that tab in place, so we don't need this anymore. Okay. And then, let me see, because they had it... They had it kind of loose like this, you see? So, if I do it the same, and then kind of have it loose like this so we'll peel this off to open up the adhesive it goes like that and they didn't really crease it down hard or anything so I don't know it was kind of just loose like that for the most part. Okay, <clears throat> so we got that and we got that. Hopefully it's lined up right. And then you got the power button, you got these. I think everything else is good. I don't think we need to really migrate anything else. So we'll set that aside. Give me a second, I'm probably getting a bunch of messages. Yeah, give me a second, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So, let's go ahead and get the motherboard back in. We'll zoom out a little bit. Start up here again. Okay. There's still some dust on here. Let me make sure to clean this off because since we're opening it, might as well get all the dust out while we can. Okay. We'll get this back in. All right, this piece was kind of like all tucked down here, so it's a little bit tricky to get back in, I think. Make sure to get all these cables. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Good thing I remembered. I almost forgot. We gotta get the speakers in place first, okay? So this one, they have these little raised metal parts to line it up with, so get that back lined up. <clears throat> As lo along with the screw mounts here okay then let me see the old one yeah one two three four okay three four okay they're all visible here so we'll get this get that in there i don't know if that's supposed to be on top or underneath we'll put that underneath right so one two three and four. Okay, so we got that all lined back up. Then we'll get this in and we'll just drop that back in place. All right, looks good. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, now we can get the motherboard back in. You got to make sure all these cables end up back on top when you put this in. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. So make sure those five end up back on top. Okay, we'll pull these cables out. Alright, 
carefully guide this over. Oh, this thing keeps sticking back down. It's being a pain. All right, make sure that stays folded over. It doesn't want to stay, but make sure it does. Okay, and the speaker wire, of course, that keeps getting in the way, so make sure that goes in the right place. It might be easier to tip from tip the left side up and then get this side in first. Let's see here. Yeah, because you want to get this speaker cable on top. Alright, carefully drop this back down. Did I not line this up quite right? The This cable is kind of getting in the way of the thing here. Maybe this isn't... No, this is all lined up right. So I might have to readjust the keyboard cable. Oh, this adhesive is much stronger than the other one, so hopefully I can fill it up okay. There we go. Okay, so I just want to get this out of the way. Okay, let's actually get this cable in first because it keeps wanting to get in the way. So we'll line that up, get that in, <clears throat> and then slide your finger over the latch to get it in properly. And then we'll just go down here and stick that down. All right, then we can go ahead and get the keyboard cable. I'm gonna plug the keyboard cable in here and then we'll line it all up and stick it back down. Make sure the keyboard cable goes in all the way. Okay, is that in all the way? Okay, I think that's it. Slide your finger over the top to latch it down. All right, then we'll again curl this around like last time. All right, and then we can go ahead and stick this down on top. Okay, I guess we'll put it on both. There we go, like that. And that looks good. All right, <clears throat> DC jack charge board connector. It did go underneath the motherboard a little, so we're gonna lift the motherboard up slightly and then tuck that underneath as we get this back in. Okay, make sure to get it lined up. Come on, there we go. All right, there we go. Let's see, we got the speaker cable here, but let's go ahead and get the screen back in first, okay? Um, we can start actually putting in the screws for the motherboard. You don't have to do it in this exact order, but let's go ahead and get this screw in. Let's actually also get the keyboard backlight cable in because why not? So that one went that way and then it folded this way. Okay, slide your finger over the latch, and there we go. It kind of will curl around on its own. So that looks good. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and continue getting back these screws in. So we'll get this screw in with this plastic latch hook whatever thing. Okay, tighten that down. Make sure that's in properly. Good. All right, is that right? It looks a little bit crooked, but. Okay, well, there we go. Okay, then we had a whole bunch of screws on this side. We got this one down here. <clears throat> then we got this one over here. This guy over here next to the speaker. And then this last one up here. Okay. Let me see if I'm getting messages real quick and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and get the screen. It's a little dusty here as well. Let me brush that. Ooh. Pretty dusty. Okay. So this screen, again, you can have the, oops, let me zoom out a bit more. So you can have the hinges up like that. 
Okay, so just like this. And then we can actually take this whole thing, just make sure to keep the cables up and out of the way. And we'll slide that into place. Okay, slide that in, make sure the cables aren't getting damaged. And once you get it all lined up, we should be good. You can slowly try and pull these um, hinges back down, but first let's get these cables looped in out of the way. Okay. That one in there. Okay, it's very important that you get these this antenna in through these little grooves, otherwise when you slot in the CD drive, you can damage it. So be careful with that. Okay, so we got all of that in. All right, and then be careful with this cable when you put the hinge down, you don't wanna accidentally pinch it on anything. So we're gonna pull on this. Oh, actually that's gonna be very tough to push down, I think. Uh, one thing you can do, I'm gonna actually switch over to a T8, Torx 8 screwdriver bit. We're gonna get inside the hinge, the screw mount right here. We don't wanna pull it too far out. And then we're going on this one because that's closest to the moving part. And then we're gonna use that to leverage and turn it just like that. Just enough to kind of hold, fold it over. And then you can kind of hold this down, hold the wireless antenna down so it's following the groove and then push it down like this. Make sure that the plastic mounts do line up. You don't want to force it down. You can see it's kind of stuck on it now. So we got to adjust the alignment of the base and then kind of get it in. There we go. Okay, so we got that in. <clears throat> Let's see, then we'll get the two screws in. Oh, actually, let me go ahead and do this side as well. So we got the LCD LVDS cable that goes through that route as well. And then that goes around here, around the thing and under, oops, let me zoom in here. Okay, it goes over here under the speaker and over here. So there's some dust stuck in there. Get that out. Okay, flip that up. This cable needs to go in at an angle, so make sure to get it in right. Okay, like that, good. And then slide your finger over to latch it down. Okay, so there we go. Kind of hold that in place. And then same thing, if you can't, if you can't twist this over by hand, you can use the screwdriver, but it looks like I can do it by hand. Okay, then line it up. Make sure to get the raised screw mounts lined up. If you can't, you can actually lift the um, you can lift this this part up to get it to line up, okay? And then once you get it to line up, you can push down here some more, okay? Get that in. You can see we get those raised mounts in, and then you can push it down and slowly drop the rest of it with it, okay? There we go. All right, let's get the screws back in for the hinges so it stays aligned. Oops, let me put this away. Back to the JS1 screwdriver. <clears throat> if you want to make sure make sure these are extra secure, you can use some thread locker. Um, I'll probably put a little bit, but let's get that. Okay, so where's my... Huh, what happened to my thread locker bottle? Oh, here it is. Okay, so we'll get the thread locker, and we'll put a little bit. Okay. Use very little. All right, my bottle's a little bit clogged, so it goes very slow. But uh, just gonna get a tiny bit. Let me actually move this out of the way. I don't want to trip on it. So you just get a tiny bit on it like that, and get that into place. We're gonna do that for um, all the screws here under the cover. Okay, because a lot of times these screws come loose and then that causes it to rip out from the casing. Okay, so we'll get those two screws in. Good, we'll go over to the other side and we'll do the same thing. Again, you don't need much, very little. Um, it basically just prevents the screws from turning back out. Okay, tighten that down, good. Second one. There we 
we go. Perfect. Tighten that in. <clears throat> All right, good. Okay, let's see what else we got to put back. We have the optical disk drive slot. So, oops, the rubber piece is coming out with me. Let go of my finger. Okay, so we got this optical disk drive port. Make sure that latches up. Get that in. Okay, good. Make sure that's in all the way and then slide your finger over to latch it down. Line that up. This actually has like raised mounts that hold it into place if you set it in. Okay, we'll get these two screws down. That one and that one. All right, we got the wireless card. Get that in. There's some like dust and stuff on it. Get that in. All right. Get that. Line it up. Get that screw down. Okay, next we got the fan. We're gonna make sure that the wireless antenna follows the fan routing. So let's get that out of the way. Get this in. Make sure to get the fan again that you plug it in the right way. Line that up. Pinch that in. Good. Okay, then we'll drop the fan into place. Get the two screws back in. One and this one. <clears throat> All right, then we'll get this back in over, under, under, over. <clears throat> and then we'll just get this wireless antenna back in. All right, I don't know if it matters if it's on the inside or outside of that part, but. Line that up. Alright, kinda get that lined up. This one's a little tricky because the way it's bent. Come on. Go and then click it down. Perfect. I don't know why they're only using the antenna number two. I don't know why they're not using antenna number one, but that's how they have it. All right. Next, uh, I think we got, okay, we got the hard drive. So let's zoom out here. Hard drive goes in this slot down here. Make sure that latches up. Okay, we're just gonna drop this in. So you get this back side in first, you have to go at an angle, slide that back, and then you can go ahead and push this down. Perfect, then we'll get that and get this in. It helps if you can grab just the blue tab, but uh, this one's kind of tricky, so we'll go like that. There we go. You can see the little white parts behind the wings of the blue connector, That's right? And then latch that down. Okay, I think all we have left is the bottom cover and the optical disk drive. So, oh, don't forget to plug in the speakers, obviously. Okay. Make sure you don't plug them in upside down. Usually you can actually check the pins are closer to the top of the connector. Um, let's see, is that upside down or is that the right way? Hmm. I can't even tell on this one, it's too small. Give me a second, let's see. Try with the flashlight. Yeah, the pins are at the top, okay. So yeah, you want the side of this connector that's solid plastic. You don't wanna put it upside down where you can see the exposed pins. Um, if you put it upside down, you will damage the pins inside on the motherboard connector and then you'll need motherboard micro soldering repair. Um, anyways, there we go. You can go ahead and tape this down. This wire doesn't really need to be taped down, so if you don't have this tape, don't worry about it. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry for doing that uh, zoomed out so far, but there we go. Okay. Bottom cover. All right. Oh, don't forget the battery. <laughs> okay. 
The battery has a lot of dust on it, so I need to clean that. Okay. There we go. Battery line up. It has the raised notch here and here, so you can line it up. Drop it down. Oh, I almost forgot these two connectors. Ooh, I'm forgetting stuff. <laughs> All right touchpad connector here. I'm going to peel it up a little to get it lined up better. Get that in. Good. Once it's lined up, again, slide your finger down. Okay, this thing is kind of going all weird, so let me try and fix that. Okay, there we go. All right, and then we got this cable here. Oh, this one's kind of doing weird stuff. All right, then we got the cable for the buttons here. Make sure that latches up. Get that in. Good, and then slide your finger over that. All right, perfect. We'll get the battery back in, line it up and push that down right there okay now we just get all the battery screws back in hopefully i didn't miss any connectors i think i got them all this time okay then we got the one screw here and the one screw here all right there we go now we gotta get the bottom cover back on, line it up. Okay, make sure everything lines up right. Give me a second, I'm getting some messages. Okay, all right, click that in, click that in, go around these sides, go around the front. Okay, make sure to clip this in, good clip the middle one all right make sure those look good okay we got the two screws that were in here let's get those in first that guy good this one all right get the optical disk drive back in you shouldn't have to force it in, so just slide it kind of slow. Let's see. Okay, just like this. Push that in. Good. All right, and then we just got to get all the screws back in and the rubber feet, and we should be good to go. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. Leave a comment because YouTube likes to see that. Watch another video. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't really contribute to the channel, it'd be, I'd be very grateful if you can watch like another video or two uh, because that tells YouTube that you're interested in my videos and it will make the algorithm share my channel more. But uh, anyways, <clears throat> let's get all the rest of these screws back in and we're good to go. All right. I don't know if they left charge in the battery. Uh, one other thing, <clears throat> if I didn't mention, the main battery also acts as the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. So keep that in mind. Um, it will actually take a bit longer to boot the first time because the BIOS has been reset and it's basically uh, resetting all the settings. Okay. So we'll get this back lined up. A lot of times these things get stretched out so it helps to kind of do one edge first and then go to the other edge and line that up and then work your way towards the center so any slack will kind of get smushed together. But uh, there we go, perfect. And the last one here. Here, this guy. Okay, and then just work your way all the way to the center again. 
And there we go. All right, let's flip it over, see if it powers up. All right. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I think the battery's dead on here. <laughs> so let me go plug this in so that we can test it, and I'll be back. All right, let me go find a charger for this guy. <clears throat> All right, so I'm back. Let's plug this guy in. Charge light is on. Does this one not go to orange? I don't know. All right, power button. I did hear it power on. <clears throat> Again, the battery, removing the battery does reset the CMOS BIOS, so keep that in mind. One way to tell if it's on, if you don't know, you can try pressing the CD drive button here and see if it powers. And there we go. Oh, and there you go, CMOS reset. Okay, so press enter to start it up and it should restart itself and then you should be good. Um, you might have to reset the date and time because the date and time will get reset. I do see the screen is lit up um, and yeah, the CD drive does come out. So yeah, all right, it should be restarting and there we go. You can see the HP is starting up. This one has a spinning hard drive in it, so it is slow. I do I'll probably tell the customer they should upgrade to an SSD because um, it'll make a huge speed difference. <clears throat> but other than that, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, like, subscribe, share my channel, watch other videos, comment. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing well to the channel. Every little bit helps. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Let's drop this spike.